More and more we get the question of what's it like to be a real estate agent. So we wanted to make a little video to talk about 15 misconceptions of what it's like to be a real estate agent. My beautiful wife's gonna be reading me the questions and I'll just go ahead and tell you guys true or false kind of what I think about the question. So Jen, if you wanna go ahead and start with question number one. All right, number one, here goes. Easy money. Easy money. So this is probably the biggest misconception because we've all seen the, the, the TV shows like Selling Sunset and there's a bunch of other ones. I don't know them all. I know Brian Sirhant was on one. And, you know, you just show a couple houses, make a phone call, you got a $100,000 paycheck. Well, that is probably the biggest misconception of real estate and why real estate sees the most people leave the industry. It's because it is work. Um, there is no free ticket in life. So if you want to make money, you got to put out the work. Uh, one really big thing that drives it, especially in our local community, is whenever you see a real estate agent that's very successful, those are the real estate agents you see. You don't see the 200 real estate agents that work in Walla Walla today that are not successful. You only see the 10, 20, 30 that are out there every day and that are successful. So easy money, I say that that is absolutely false misconception. All right, there you have it. And number two, flexible schedule means less work. Flexible schedule. So in real estate, you definitely have a flexible schedule. And this one could also probably say you make your own schedule. Is that true? You know, at the end of the day, it is true. Yeah, you can make your own schedule. But what you're going to learn is, is when you make your own schedule, you also make your own money. So what I'm saying is, is if you don't want to work after five o'clock, if you don't want to work weekends, well, you're going to have clientele that want to work weekends and want to work after five o'clock. So can you make your own schedule? Yes, but it could have negative impacts. At the end of the day, you do need to set away time for your family, for your spouse, for just you time. So you, you do need to set those boundaries. But do you make your own schedule? I will agree. Yes, that's true. But with caveats to that. So yes, you can make your own schedule. But you know, you might miss out on a dinner. You might miss out on a birthday to make to close a big deal. Because at the end of the day, when a client calls and says, I want to write an offer, Sometimes it can be really hard to say, no, no, I've made my own schedule. I'm off right now. All right, next up, high commissions. High commissions. So this is another big one from the television shows, $150,000 commission. Now all commission rates in Walla Walla are absolute, in, in Washington state and I think everywhere are 100% negotiable. And when somebody looks at the commission, let's say it says 6%, they see 6% out there, they think, oh, this agent's making 6%. That's absolutely not the case. Most of the time you're splitting that commission with the other side, whether that be 50-50 or 60-40. So let's say it's 6% and now you're getting 3%. Well, if we look at the average sales price in Walla Walla, right around 400,000 right now, that's $12,000. But out of that $12,000, you have to realize there is a, what's called an office split, which might be, you know, 70-30. So then you're getting 30% of that. I'm, I don't know the math, let's say $9,000. And then you're taking 25% and giving it to the government. So let's just say you're you're down to $7,000. Now, $7,000 for selling a house, that's still a really good income. We haven't taken any costs for your time. How much time do you have into this one transaction? Is this client you've been working with for nine months and now you're getting $7,000? Is this a, a client that you've missed five of your son's football games? You're getting $9,000 for or $7,000 for? So. So really, is the commission high? You know, they start out really high, they look really good, but at the end of the day, by the time you pay your bills and the IRS and everything, commissions really, I believe, fall in line with the amount of work that you do. All right, there you go. Okay, agents push clients to buy. Agents push clients to buy. Is this a true, if this was true or false, I would just plead the fifth on this one. There's definitely agents out there that push clients to buy, I completely see it. That is not an agent you want to work with. You need an agent that just takes care of you, listens to you, and helps guide you. You don't want an agent that's forcing you to make a move. The one thing that me and my wife always say is, we don't live in it, we don't make the payment, so we don't care. If you're not happy with the house, let us know. If we get somebody in a house and they go, I'm, I don't really like this house. Okay, let's go to the next house. You don't need to tell me why, anything. The one thing I, I try to tell people all the time is, it's not all about sales and real estate. I am not a salesman. I just like to build relationships. I like to know people. I like to get to know people and make fun with people. And then at the end of the day, hopefully they have a good time with me and they end up buying a house. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. All agents are the same. All agents are the same, absolutely false. There are some agents out there that will go out and take an iPhone photo or like a, I don't even know, like a flip phone razor photo from back in the day and they'll post it online and they'll say, listing, listing down, I'm done working on it. And then there's agents that will go out there. They'll do have a professional photographer go through They'll do video, 3D tour, um, drone shots, floor plans, open houses, and they're out there promoting it every day, telling people, hey, have you seen my listing at 123 Banana Street? This house is great, you would love it. Do you have any friends? Do you know anybody looking to buy or sell? Um, all agents are not created equally. The good news is, is this industry, you can definitely see the agents that are out there with the cell phone. And you can definitely see the agents that are out there putting a beautiful product together and their pay will make a difference as well. You definitely get rewarded in this business for how hard you work. And that's one of them where all agents aren't created equal, all agents don't get paid equal. It's a glamorous job. <laughs> glamorous job, right? Because we see it on TV all the time. You're just showing houses in your $1,000 suits, driving up in your $500,000 car, and you just make a couple phone calls and it's gone. There's definitely some glamorous aspects to the house. My, my favorite part about showing houses is some of the most beautiful homes that I get to see. I love looking at million dollar houses. I don't know who wouldn't. But what you don't see is, is just the other day we had somebody, their U-Haul broke down, they got late. Nobody was there to do the final clean through of the house. Now, do we have people that can do a clean through of a house? Absolutely. Can they get there in a couple hours notice before we need to hand over keys? Absolutely not. So Jenna herself was in there with a bucket just scrubbing floors and walls trying to get this house ready. So there's definitely some glamorous aspects and, and I'm not gonna lie that I love showing million dollar houses, but there's definitely some unglamorous parts. And I think that's with a lot of work, there's glamorous parts. But uh, for the most part, I show $5 million houses a year. I clean a lot more than five homes. Agent determines the house price. This is a big one we see online. The agent determines the house price. So I call my agent, they tell me what price I should pay. That is absolutely not the case. We actually, what we do is if you call us and you're ready, you say, hey, I want to sell. I want to know what my house is worth or hey, I want to sell. I know what my house is worth. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell you, hey, we need to come to your house. We need to do what's called the market on your home. It's going to be about a five minute walkthrough of your house where we're going to go through the house, all the features of the house, look at the condition. You're going to tell me any updates you've made. And then I'm going to go back to my office and I'm going to pull recent comparables that have sold on the market and kind of see, you know, hey, this house sold for this price. It's a very good comparable. Oh, this one has a pool, so maybe it's not a good comparable or this one's more square footage. And then we're going to come back to you with a range. So there is no crystal ball that tells us what price it's going to be. And when I come back to you with a range, I may ask you when I'm at your house, what do you think your house is worth? And if you tell me your house is worth 400,000 and I come back and I see it's worth 350, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I don't wanna set an incorrect expectation with somebody. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm gonna say, you know, hey, looking at the house and if my gut says 350 on the dot, I might say, you know, 339 to, to 359 and just kind of give you a range because I don't have a crystal ball but you decide what you want to sell for. If you tell me you want to sell it for 400,000 and I think that there's a possibility and I'm willing to accept the listing at that, well, I absolutely list it at 400,000. If you tell me you want to sell it at 300,000, you know, I, I'll tell you, you know, hey, that'll probably be multiple offers. You might be giving away some money there. You might want to list a little higher, but at the end of the day, you make all the decisions. We do not set the price you do. All right, listing online have made agents on obsolete. So this is a big one we're seeing lately. Uh, there was a big push about how Zillow was gonna take over the world and no one was gonna need engines anymore. There's some amazing technology out there. Chat GPT is incredible. And uh, there's a lot you can do with the internet, but there's just something about being able to go through a home with somebody that's knowledgeable and knows the market that you can talk to. The one thing I did say is this business is all about building relationships. I truly believe at the end of the day, the relationships that I have with my clients where they know and they can trust me and my solid advice is gonna outbeat Zillow or Redfin or whoever every day of the week. I definitely think that's false. I think we've seen it so far with uh, Zillow purchasing homes and then having to back out of that. 
So I, I, I have no fears that we're, we're around for a long time. All right. Agents get paid hourly or have a salary? So that is the one thing about your real estate agent. There is no guaranteed paycheck. So there is no hourly wage. There's no salary wage. We are independent contractors for the brokerage that we work for. Unique case here at the Provost team. I actually own the brokerage, so I pay myself, but uh, still independent contractor, no hourly wage. You know, the way we pull a paycheck, we may set ourselves with a monthly how much we get, but if the bank goes dry, we don't get that amount. So it's 100% commission. We don't get paid until you close. The nice part is, is we are going to do everything in our power to get your deal closed. And a lot of times we will tell you to get other service providers that do the same. So uh, like a lender for, hand, for example, we always recommend lenders that are paid commission as well, so that they're on the line as much as we are, as much as you are. This is a huge purchase for you. I don't want somebody that's just gonna go, it's five o'clock, I'm done, I'm not getting paid anymore. I want somebody that's driven to get it done just as much as we are. It's easy to get started and to get a real estate license. Absolutely. So it's easy to get started and get a real estate license. 100% it's easy. It's 90 hours of course material, uh, most of which you'll never use again in your life. I looked today, I think it's about $750 for the online course material. Um, and like I said, it's 90 hours. If you don't have a job, you can finish it in about three weeks. So absolutely easy. What was the other part of the question? It's easy to get started. Oh, and, and okay, and to get started. So the one thing I will tell you is getting started versus making money are two completely different things. It's easy to get started. It's easy to join a brokerage. Uh, most brokerages don't have very big requirements because you're paying them. So, I mean, why not? So, but once you actually get started and actually get some sales, that's where it can be a lot harder. Uh, we do see agents go six months without a paycheck in the beginning because they haven't built those relationships. If you're lucky when you start, you'll know somebody, hey, you know, I'm getting my real estate agent. I'm going to become a real estate agent in the next six months. Great. We're actually thinking about selling in four. We'll wait two months for you. That's a great situation, but it doesn't happen every time. So yeah, easy to get your license, easy to get started. Might take a little while to actually make some money though. Keep that in mind and make sure you have some savings in the bank when you get started. Agents only work when they have clients. Agents only work when they have clients. So that is one big misconception is I'm only working when I'm out showing houses so I can just do anything. Um, I know people have called me and been like, hey, Phil, are you gonna come camping with us? No, oh, are you showing homes? No, I'm not. Well, then what are you doing? My favorite part of the job is showing houses. There's something so rewarding when you show somebody a house and they find the one and they wanna make an offer that emotional connection that they make to the house, it's so rewarding. That is the one part of my job that I don't get to see as much. Um, most of the time, it's back at the office doing paperwork, social media, calling people, uh, going door knocking to see if there's anybody out there wanting to sell, calling expired listings. There's so much to do behind the scenes that is not showing homes, that showing homes probably only act, equates to about 10%. Although one of my favorite parts, it is definitely not all that is part of the job. All agents are rich. All agents are rich. So we talked about this a little bit with the first one, easy money. All agents are rich. The one thing that you will notice is if you look at real estate agents and you name them, they're probably doing fairly well. Um, myself, we do fairly well for the business we're in. I, I'm very grateful that I was able to get into this business. I'm able to make relationships and I appreciate everyone's support so much around me that has made it possible to where we're able to be successful. But you have to realize that there's 200 agents in Walla Walla. When you think about the agents, you're probably thinking about the ones that are doing pretty well. You're probably thinking about 10 or 20 agents. If you go online, you're probably only gonna find 30 agents. There's a lot of other agents that have struggled, especially right now in the market we're in. It is a lot harder to sell a home than just taking a phone with your uh, phone, a photo, and throwing it online. So we're seeing people struggle. So if you have an agent that you've used in the past, reach out to them. You know, maybe you guys can talk. Maybe you know somebody looking to buy or sell and that agent could use the help. Reach out to them and let them know because a lot of agents are selling a tenth of what they did last year. So not every agent is rich and there's definitely ebb and flow to every, every real estate career I've ever seen. All agents know everything about all properties. 
all agents and everything about all properties is absolutely not true. Now, when it comes to residential, I try to get out and see as many properties as possible so I can go out there and see a house. So if you call me and you see a, hey, have you seen 234 Banana Street? I can say, yeah, I actually did a preview on that house the day it went out. What do you want to know? But there's a lot of houses that are not vacant and the house is not vacant. I'm not going to kick somebody out just so I can preview it, especially if it's a tenant. So there is some properties we don't know about. Also, when it's like land or commercial, some agents only specify in one industry so or, or one sector. So a lot of the agents will only do residential, some will do commercial. We, I have recently stepped into commercial. I can tell you it's a completely different game. So uh, I'm learning that as I go through it. But yes, all agents uh, absolutely do not know. So I guess no, all agents absolutely do not know about all properties. The one thing I can tell you is we all have the tools to find out about those properties and we're all more than happy to look and find the information you're looking for. Real estate agents only show their own listings. So this is another really big misconception we hear all the time. I have someone call me and say, do you have any of these listings for sale? And I may not have a five bedroom, four bath home for sale, but if it's in what we call the multiple listing service, which is our local network of homes, we can actually go out and we can look at those houses and we can show you those homes. Um, if every agent was just selling their own homes, it wouldn't work very well because you'd have to work with 10 agents to see all the houses out there um, or 50 agents to see all the houses out there. But luckily we all work together and we all coordinate so that we can actually all see each other's information on houses. And then we have a special programs where we can all show houses together. So if you want to see a house that's listed by Desiree Schultz or Jenna Provost or Philip Provost, I can show any of those listings. All I have to do is just coordinate so that we can get in there to show those. And uh, oh, every other agent in town is the same way. If they want to see one of my listings, my seller is more than happy to get somebody in there so that we can go ahead and get that home sold. Your job is mainly selling homes. So my job is mainly selling homes is not true at all. Uh, the one thing that I will say about real estate, I think the most common misconception is that we're all salesmen and that we're selling all the time. And that is absolutely not true. Um, I actually sold cars at one time before this and it was not for me and I got out of it and I came into the real estate game and it is completely different. This job is all about the relationships that you build, the job that you do, and the trust that you get from your clients. So it's all about going out, making friends, making family, making people happy, letting people trust you. That is what this job is. There's marketing to it, but more than anything, it is building relationships and just making sure those relationships are strong and that people know they can come to you with any real estate questions. And then also building your knowledge and making sure that you know what you're doing. That That's most part of the job, not just selling homes. And it looks like that's 15 questions. If you guys have any other questions, I'd be happy to make another video like this. Feel free to reach out. You can comment below or shoot me an email, philip at theprovosteam.com. Thank you so much.